Hello everybody, it's Sarah and I have done it. I have now found my favorite series by N.K. Jemisin. I did not think anything would go over the Dreamblood duology and I still think that overall, as a single book, The Shadowed Sun is my favorite book by N.K. Jemisin. However, today we're not here to talk about the Dreamblood duology. I have a full review of that series duology, linked down below. I also have a full review of the Broken Earth series, linked down below. Today we're going to review and talk about the Inheritance trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This is a massive trilogy. And with this trilogy, I have now read all books by N.K. Jemisin that are currently published that I want to read because I gotta be honest not really interested in reading her short story collection because I'm just not generally a short story person especially not if they're not connected to an already existing series that I love and also I'm just not interested in picking up the city we became. So yeah I have now finished all the books that I want to read by N.K. Jemisin. This trilogy was the latest that I finished and oh my god it is so good. Everybody please 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 go read this series because oh my god oh my god so good. But anyway this series this bind up of the series consists of three books as well as obviously three books since it's a trilogy, as well as a novella. The three books are first The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, then The Broken Kingdom and then Kingdom of Gods and the novella is called The Awakened Kingdom. I honestly cannot tell you too much as for a summary of this series I can just tell you that this series is set in a world where gods walk among mortals and in fact the reason why the walk among mortals at the beginning of the series is because they have been enslaved by said mortals and now have to do their bidding which is not very fun for the gods. Each of the three books follows a different character. They are actually even set at different times so there's always at least a decade in between the books. I think between the first and the second book it's a decade and between the second and the third book it's like maybe 30 years or something? I don't know. I don't know how long exactly it was. And all three books are also written in first person perspective. However, I am someone who doesn't like first person perspective, doesn't like. I'm not the biggest fan of first person perspective. So do not let that put you off from picking up this series because it's still absolutely amazing and I love it. And because of that, within this spoiler free review, I will make more of a gush out of it rather than a proper review of negatives versus positives. Because in my opinion, there isn't really anything negative about this series. I mean, something I would say is that if I were to currently rate books, which I'm not, unless it's a five star read, I probably wouldn't give the single books five stars. I probably wouldn't have rated any of the three books five stars. However, I 100% gave the series as a whole five stars because I just love it, okay? I, I just loved it that much as a whole. And so now let's get into the gush. Let me tell you the things that I would think others might think are negative about the series and why they weren't negative for me and let's start with first person perspective. I just thought it worked really well for this series. Honestly within this book it's more like you know I didn't care that it was first person perspective. I just thought that we got some incredible insight into our main character in each book so I really enjoyed that. And then the fact that you follow a different set of characters in each book, it's kind of similar to the Dreamblood duology in that way actually. Actually so far from the three series that she has finished, the Broken Earth series is the only series by N.K. Jemisin where we follow the same set of characters throughout. Although within this series, of course, since there are gods that play major characters, these reappear in all books. So you do have recurring characters, it's just not the same main characters in each book. 
But yeah, even though we follow a different set of characters or a different main character in each book, I think there's still so much complexity to the characters and you still fall in love with them so much even within that one book. And then you start the second book and I was a little bit sad always that we didn't get to see the same characters because I loved them but then I instantly fell in love with those new characters so I didn't mind any way that we didn't get to see them or some of them in the new books. And so yeah, I just think the characters in this series are absolutely the greatest of the characters so far in any N.K. Chemisin book that I've read. I love all of them so 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 much from Yena to Nahadoth who is like... <sighs> Nahadoth is without a doubt the sexiest being I have ever read about in a book. And he would probably kill me instantly and I do not care. He's just... He just has something about him that's incredible. That's like... He has something about him that I went so far as to tweet about him. And I don't usually tweet about characters I love in series. Like, I know a lot of book Twitter does that, but I don't do that a lot. So yeah, that just tells you how charismatic and amazing Nahadoth is. Absolutely love him. I loved Sia, who is like this little trickster god. And I just... I love the characters so much. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much I love them and how interesting I found them. Also, once again, as with all of N.K. Chemisin's books, there's a lot of representation in like all the LGBT spectrums. There's gender representation, there is sexuality representation in terms of sexuality and so on. I especially love that with the gods, you know, that's, I mean, it's become more common, but this series definitely kind of plays with gods and do gods even have gender and so on. And so you have some gods who in one sentence are called she and in the next sentence are called he. And that's completely fine, it's not explained or anything and it doesn't need to be explained because they're fucking gods anyway. So yeah, absolutely love that. Also, the second book has a main character who is blind, so there is some representation in terms of visibility as well. And yeah, I don't know, I don't know how to tell you to go and read this series because it's just so, 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 so good. I also loved the politics within this book. There's not that much you see in terms of politics, but there's always like a little bit. Then I just, I just loved everything about this series. I also absolutely loved the plot and I loved what N.K. Jemisin did with her plotline because since we do follow different characters in every book, we also follow a different plotline in every book that's finished, pretty much finished at the end of the book. However, it still felt like there was like a red thread through all the three books that connect them to be more than just you know, books set in the same world, but that actually made them a series. There was a through line still, at least thematically, some plot points. And, you know, it kind of made a, not bait and switch, but there was a subversion of themes from the first book, or maybe subversion is the wrong word for it. I'm kind of missing the words right now to describe the series. But there was certainly some themes and some plot points within the first book that you felt were just within the first book. But once I finished the last book, I noticed how they wove through the entirety of the series and how they were constantly picked back up and so on. However, you would have to read the entirety of the trilogy to get that. So yeah, definitely go and read the entirety of the trilogy. As always, N.K. Jemisin's writing is just so good. I think the writing in this series is a lot more accessible than the Broken Earth trilogy. I think, you know, the plot, the characters, the theme, not the themes. I think the themes are actually more obvious in the Broken Earth trilogy, but the plot, the world building, the characters are a lot more accessible in this series. So if you're a little bit intimidated by the Broken Earth trilogy, if you have maybe started fifth season, picked it up and kind of 
felt intimidated and not continued on with it, then I would recommend maybe picking up the Inheritance Trilogy first, reading it, loving it, and then getting the motivation to continue on with the Broken Earth series. So yeah, I can without a doubt say that this is my favorite series of N.K. Jemisin. This series is now definitely one of my favorite series of all time. I am so, so happy I read it. And yeah, I can just highly recommend you all pick this up. This video was a mess of a review. It's more of a gush because, you know, sometimes you just love books that much and you don't have the words to express why you love them so much. And that's how I feel about this book. And so, yeah, with all of that said, that was it for this video. If you enjoyed this mess of a video, please give me a thumbs up and also maybe subscribe. If you have read the series or if you plan to read the series, if you have read just one book of the series, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. All the links to my social media are in the description box down below, so go and check those out. All the links to my book club where we read one adult high fantasy book written by a woman or a genderqueer person per month will also be left linked down below. We actually read the first book, The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms for the book club. So if you're interested, definitely go and check those links out. And yeah, with all of that said, I hope I'll see you soon. Bye!